Hi, I'm David Davis from Actual Tech Media. I'm excited to be here at the headquarters of Hedvig, and I'm joined by Mr. Rob Whiteley. He's the Vice President of Marketing. How you doing, Rob? I'm doing very well. Thanks for having me. Yeah, thanks for being on. So, you know, the Actual Tech Media audience, you know, so many of those out there in enterprise IT, they're struggling with storage performance, storage capacity, and I know they've heard of software-defined storage, but they might not be quite sure exactly what it is or, or how it can help. So, you know, can you first just tell us what is software-defined storage? Sure, so my, my simple definition is you, you sort of take an industry standard commodity server, HP, could be Intel, could be Supermicro, it doesn't matter. Uh, you put software directly on it, you kind of cluster all those together and that will create kind of a scale out storage system. And so I think the, the, the big thing that differentiates us from the past is uh, the software intelligence is completely decoupled from the hardware. And so that's what gives a lot of the scaling and, and flexibility advantages. Uh, and then really it's just a matter of making sure you power that server correctly. Okay, so running your storage infrastructure across commodity hardware and there's no need for the traditional expensive costly storage area network. Yeah, and yeah, all runs over standard ethernet and uh, I think the biggest advantage a lot of people get is uh, I can sort of size each one of those commodity servers so I don't have to worry about the big capacity planning headaches I had. You're certainly not buying three to five months, a year's out, you're buying you know, sometimes even just months out, but one server one month, next server the next, I, I buy exactly what I need at that moment. Yeah, that, and that's smart for companies who've been, like you said, buying SANS, you know, with three to five year at, right. uh, capacity, uh, you know, forecasting type thing. And that's a horrible, you know, return on investment yeah. for them. Yes. So um, say I'm interested in software defined storage. I have a traditional, you know, storage infrastructure. Um, how can I get started? What should I do? Yeah, so, so first let me give you kind of my simple analogy. Um, just to kind of describe it. So think of software-defined storage as like an engine in a car, V6 engine. Um, and depending on what chassis you put that engine in, you're going to get completely different use case out of it. You put it in a four-door sedan, it's perfect for commuting. You put it in a pickup truck, it's perfect for the job site. You put it in a big panel van, it's good for hauling passengers. What you do is you tune that engine for that workload. And so in this analogy, the commodity server is the chassis. You buy that, depending on what your workload is, and then all you do is tune the engine, right? So the software doesn't change, you're just trying to make it appropriate for whatever your use case is. That makes sense, that makes sense. I mean, the engine uh, powers the vehicle, no matter what it is, but you've got different workloads yes. that you want to run on the vehicle. Exactly. So let's talk about some use cases. Yep. Um, you know, what if I have, let's say, server virtualization? Yeah, yeah, and I think what confuses a lot of people is they'll say, okay, that is very flexible. Uh, where do I start? How do I think about it? Yeah. And so the sort of simple way we break it down is, okay, you've got your sort of primary data. You can think of this as sort of your production environment. You have your secondary data. You can kind of think of this as your test dev type environments. And then you typically have your traditional infrastructures uh, and then probably these new kind of cloud-like infrastructures. And so what we have found is that, you know, for example, server virtualization, it's a pretty well-known primary environment, it's typically VMware, uh, and so that, it's tempting to be a great place to start. However, what we have found is that most customers actually want to start down towards the bottom. Why is that? It's a new technology, it's disruptive. I don't want to stick it into an area where it's more business critical. So let me start in an environment like backup or test dev. So for us, the question isn't really where to start. The question is, do you have more traditional workloads or do you have more cloud-like workloads? Uh, and so that'll kind of help. So if you have a DevOps environment and you're just getting off the ground, start in test dev. If not, start with something like backup. You could actually use a technology like this as just a basic backup target. You point your backup media server and software at it, and you can replace all that old disk to disk stuff that doesn't have the same kind of scaling capabilities that these new platforms have. Very smart. I mean, and that's where people started with server virtualization. It's kind of with the low-hanging yes. fruit. We'll start with what's easy, what makes sense, and we can very quickly try it out and, and see the, the value. Yes. So, you know, with backup, people have, they're struggling with backup problems. Uh, so they could get started with software-defined storage by simply taking some commodity servers and using Hedvig, installing it on top, and then pointing their backup target to it. Exactly. And I think what most people will find is, okay, I start down here, and then this is my journey, right? If I'm comfortable doing it here, then I bring it into my VMware use case. Maybe I bring it over and start doing more cloud-like environments. And so it's kind of starting in whatever quadrant you want, and then as your comfort level of the technology goes up, again, you just buy a different chassis. So the example of the backup is, I'm probably gonna get a 4U server packed with eight or 10 terabyte drives, a little bit less CPU, a little bit less memory, perfect for a backup use case. 
Up here, I'm gonna want probably a one or two U, a lot more memory, a lot more CPU to drive the IOPS. The beauty is I don't purchase new licenses on the software side, I just simply have to think about what chassis do I want and then tune the policies. Very nice, and making software-defined storage really easy. So if people wanna get started, what should they do? Uh, you can certainly head over to hedviginc.com to learn more uh, or certainly just reach out to us. We'd love to get started. Awesome, thank you. Cool.